When you think about the data scientist role, you probably think about AI and fancy machine learning models. And when you think about the data analyst role, you probably think about good looking dashboards with plenty of features and insights. Well, this all looks good until you land a job and you quickly realize that you will probably spend 60 or 70% of your time doing something that is called data cleaning, which I agree is not the sexiest topic to talk about. The thing is that logically, if we spend so much time preparing our data before creating a dashboard or a machine learning model, this means that data cleaning becomes arguably the number one skill for data specialists. And this is exactly why today I want to show you all you need to know about data cleaning. And I will do this giving you real life examples that mirror what you will actually do in the workplace. And so without further ado, let's get into the so what of this video. So let's start by quickly seeing why we need to clean our data precision in analysis. So imagine spending hours, days, or even weeks on a project only to realize your results are completely off. That's a nightmare, right? Unclean data can introduce variance and errors into an analysis leading to inaccurate results. If you clean your data, you ensure the integrity of the analytical process, eliminating potential pitfalls and inaccuracies. Then we have maintaining professional credibility because in data science and analytics, your reputation is intrinsically linked to the accuracy and validity of your findings. And so presenting analysis based on unclean data can compromise your credibility in front of a manager or a client. Then we have optimizing computational efficiency and so properly clean and formatted data can make your analysis run faster. And so if you think about it, it's like decluttering your workspace with no unnecessary junk in the way, everything just flows better, especially when you're using advanced algorithms. Now, data cleaning is a three steps process. So step one is identify the leak. You begin data cleaning by determining what is incorrect about your data. Then step two, fix the leak. So you will require different cleaning strategies depending on the sort of data leak you're dealing with. And this is the most time consuming process. And then step three, monitor and repeat. And so once you clean the data, you repeat steps one and two. And so let's see now in a bit more details each steps of the data cleaning process. So you initiate the data cleaning process by evaluating the inaccuracies in your data set. And so you can consider the following aspects. You can scan for gaps. Do you notice rows or even entire columns with no data? It is crucial to identify which data points are absent and understand the underlying reasons. And so, for example, if you use SQL, you can do a select all from uh, your table where the product name is null. Then you can assess the data distribution. And so utilize visualization tools to your advantage. You can highlight outliers and evaluate distributions to understand the predominant groups of values within your data. And so again, on SQL, you can do a select age and then count all from your table and you can group by age. And this will give you the distribution of uh, your data uh, grouping by age. Then you can detect irregularities. And so have you stumbled upon nonsensical data entries, for instance, entering gender equal to 1985 or postal code uh, ABCD should obviously raise some flags. And so again, in SQL, you can check for entries in the gender column that are not male or female. So for example, you can do select all from your table where gender is not in male or female. So knowing the problem is half of the battle. The other half is solving it. And so how do we solve it? So depending on the type of data dirt you're facing, you will need different cleaning techniques. And you can break down step two into seven parts. You have missing data, outliers, contaminated data, inconsistent data, invalid data, duplicate data, and data type issues. So first identify all the potential masks that missing data might wear. It can present itself as zero, blank fields, NA, none, null, and many others. And maybe other people in the team might have populated fields with placeholder values, such as default at email.com for an email, for example. And so once you get the nature of these absent values, you need to ask, does this missing data give me crucial information? And so here the primary strategy to cleanse data. So you can eliminate rows or columns. And so if you think that the absent data is not giving any value, then you can definitely delete it. And so for example, if specific product reviews are missing, you can just exclude them. And so in SQL, you would do something like delete from your table where the product review is null. Otherwise you can transform missing data. And so when numeric 
numerical calculations fail due to missing values, transforming them can become the solution. And so an empty last purchase date can be translated to a purchase recently column with value zero for no and one for yes. And so in SQL, you can create a new column which is called purchase recently based on last purchase date. And so you can do alter table with your table name, add purchase recently as an integer, update your table, set purchase recently equal to case when last purchase date is no then zero, else one, and you end the case statement. Then you have outliers. Outliers are extreme values, either very high or very low. And so an example could be a shopper spending $0.05 annually, or maybe a temperature in the desert that is recorded as minus 30 degrees Celsius. So how should you approach this? So outliers typically indicate either an interesting trend or a flawed data collection mechanism. And so here are three methodologies to address outliers. So you can exclude outliers. So because they can skew your analysis, affecting averages and overall statistical readings, you can just uh, remove them. And you can consider omitting data that falls beyond a certain percentile range. And so in SQL, to remove rows where purchase amount is in the top or bottom 1%, you can delete from your table where the purchase amount is higher, and then you can do percentile uh, count 0.99 within group order by purchase amount, or the purchase amount is lower than the percentile count 0.01 within group order by purchase amount. The other way is to partition the data, and so you can segregate standard entries from outliers. And so for instance, customers with expenditures considerably above the average might present very good marketing opportunities. And so you can create a new column segment based on the purchase amount. And so you can do alter table, your table, add segment uh, as a var char 50, update your table, and then you set segment equal to case when purchase amount is higher than you decide the threshold, then outlier, else is a standard, and then you can end the case statement. Or you can decide to retain the outliers, but adapt analysis technique. While keeping outliers, employ statistical techniques that mitigate their impact. And so you can do weighted and trim means to minimize the outlier influence. And so again, in SQL, to calculate a trim mean for purchase amount, excluding the top and bottom 5%, and then you do a subquery, select purchase amount from your table, order by purchase amount, and then you limit 5% and offset 5% as trim data. Then you have contaminated data. So now imagine you're baking a cake, and if you by mistake add salt instead of sugar, your cake will definitely taste differently than what you expected. And so this analogy is similar to the concept of data contamination, within data analysis. And so data contamination refers to the inclusion of incorrect, irrelevant, or outdated information within a data set. And so with corrupted data, there is not much you can do except removing it. And this requires a lot of domain expertise to actually be able to spot contaminated data. Then you have inconsistent data. And so let's say that you are assembling a puzzle and you realize some pieces come from a different set. This scenario mirrors inconsistent data in data analysis. And so inconsistent data refers to discrepancy or mismatches within a data set. And this can arise from different formats, standards, or scales uh, that are used in the same data set. And obviously this can distort the true representation of your data. And so suppose that you are analyzing a company's sales data from various branches across the world. And so while the European branches record dates in the format of uh, days, months, and years, the American branches, they do month, dates, and years. And so if you were to analyze this data without accounting for the inconsistency, you might mistakenly interpret sales from January 2nd as sales from February 1st, leading to incorrect insights about monthly sales trends. Then we have invalid data. And so invalid data is data that doesn't make logical sense. It's similar to corrupted data, but it arises from issues in data processing rather than collection mistakes. And again, let me give you another example. So while drafting a report on the average user time spent on your new newly launched app, everything seems in order until you spot a few anomalies. And so you see that some users appear to have spent minus 22 hours on the app. And so you check and uh, you uncover the issue. Basically, the app calculates usage duration by subtracting the start hour from the finish hour. And so a user beginning at 23 
uh, ending at 1 results in a minus 22 hours. This is because it does 1 minus 23, which is equal to minus 22. And so you understood the problem and you adjust the calculation methods to avoid such discrepancies. Now duplicate data. So duplicate data refers to repeated values for a specific data point. And so obviously this again will impact our analysis. Uh, for instance, you can overcount customers or altering uh, averages due to overrepresented values. And so to tackle duplicates, again, we have three strategies. The first one is to identify and retain only one of the identical records, discarding the rest. The second is to match records in pairs and so evaluate and retain the most pertinent, like the latest entry, for example. And the third is group records into clusters, consolidating all related information. So for instance, you can collate all the data linked to a customer that is named Mario. Then we have tackling data type challenges. And so data type inconsistencies can often introduce subtle errors in your analysis. And the nature of these challenges typically varies based on the data type in question. So it can be date time objects, strings, integers, decimals, so floats. And so usually we address uh, strings issues because strings are usually the messiest part of data cleaning because they are often human generated and uh, so very prone to errors. And so for example, there are things like case uniformity and so uh, making sure that strings follow a consistent case, for example, lowercase. And so in Python, you can use the str.lower method to have the whole column name in uh, lowercase. Or there are things like the Y space management and so trim unnecessary spaces or uh, new lines. And again in Python you can use the str.strip method to take care of uh, Y spaces in, uh, in your data. Then we have managing uh, date and time because dealing with date and time data can be tricky. And so again ways to clean it. We have data type coercion which ensures that dates are in date time format or timestamp and not strings masquerading as dates. And so in Python, you have, uh, for example, using pandas pd.2 date time to make sure that uh, the column you're dealing with is in a date time format. Last step of the data cleaning process is monitor and repeat. And so once your data is clean, you repeat steps one and two. And this is helpful, first of all, because there are the new discoveries post cleaning. And so after you kicked out those extreme outlier values, your data might start looking a bit different. And so maybe we need to reperform some of our analysis. And then also uh, learning more about the data. And so every time you roll up your sleeves and dig into the data set, you get to know it a little better. And so it's like rereading a book and picking up on things that you missed the first First time. And so by now you should be much more clear with the data cleaning process, but the key issue is that data cleaning takes way too long. And as we said, it's not the sexiest thing to do. And so usually data analysts and data scientists create a reusable scripts in SQL or Python that perform a sequence of actions automatically, like lowercase all strings, remove white spaces and break down strings into words. And so what I suggest is to remember the main steps that we covered today about data cleaning. Keep a list of these steps by your side. And if you see that uh, repetitive tasks that you can automate, then create a script that takes care of cleaning your data. As always, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I will also leave here in the screen some data analytics projects that I made using SQL and Python, where you can see some data cleaning in action and well enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.